to you who through long years and much running to and fro have been eagerly seeking in books and teaching and philosophy and religion. To you who many times have obtained a glimpse of that truth only to find when you followed and tried to reach it that it disappeared in the beyond and was but the mirage of the desert. To you who thought you had found it in some great teacher and who appeared to you to be a master. So marvelous was the wisdom he taught in the works he performed, only to awaken later to the realization that the master was but a human personality with faults and weaknesses and secret sins, the same as you, even though that personality may have been a channel through which were voiced many beautiful teachings which seemed to be the highest truth. And here you are, soul aweary and hungered and not knowing where to turn, to you, I am come. I, who am I? I, who speak with such seeming knowledge and authority, listen. I am you. That part of you who is and knows who knows all things and always knew and always was. Yes, I am you, yourself, that part of you which says I am and is I am. I am you, that transcendent innermost part of you which responds to this my word, which perceives its truth. Which recognizes all truth and discards all error wherever found. Not that part which has been feeding on error all these years. For I am your real teacher. The only real one you will ever know and the only master. I, your divine self. I and I alone, your own true self, am the teacher for you. Therefore, that which appeals to you is my message. Spoken to your outer human consciousness from within and is but a confirmation of that which the I am of you always knew within, but had not yet translated into definite, tangible terms to your outer consciousness. Likewise, all that ever appealed to you, coming from some outward expression, was but the confirmation of my word already spoken within. The outward expression was the avenue of means I chose at that time through which to reach and impress your human or self-consciousness. I am not your human mind, nor its child, the intellect. They are but the expression of your being. They are but phases of your human personality. Rise up and free yourself now and for always from the domination of your personality with its self-inflated and self-glorifying mind and intellect. For your mind henceforth must be your servant and the intellect your slave. Now, if you are strong enough to bear it, if you can put aside all of your private personal fancies, beliefs and opinions, which are but the rubbish you have gathered from the dumping grounds of others, if you are strong enough to cast them all away, then my word will be to you a source of endless joy and blessing. I am you. I have been with you always, but you do not know it. I have purposely led you through the wilderness of books and teaching, of religions and philosophies, keeping ever before your soul's eye the vision of the promised land. Now in order that you may learn to know me, so that you can be sure it is I, your own true self, who speak these words, 
you must first learn to be still. To quiet your human mind and body and all their activities so that you are no longer conscious of them. Try to imagine the I who speaks throughout these pages as being your higher or divine self, addressing and counseling your human mind and intellect, which you will consider for the moment as being a separate personality. Your human mind is so constituted that it cannot accept anything which does not confirm with what it has previously experienced or learned and which its intellect does not consider reasonable. Therefore, in addressing it, you are using such terms and expressions as will most clearly explain to your intellect the truth it must understand before the mind can awake into the consciousness of your meaning. The fact is, this I is yourself your real self. Your human mind has heretofore been so engrossed with the task of supplying its intellect and body with all manner of selfish indulgences that it has never had time to get acquainted with the real you, its true lord and master. You have been so interested in and affected by the pleasure and suffering of your body and intellect that you have almost come to believe you are your intellect and body and you have consequently nearly forgotten me, your divine self. I am not your intellect and body, and this message is to teach you that you and I are one. You cannot awaken to this fact until you can get away from the consciousness of the body and the intellect, which so long have held you enslaved. You must feel me within, before you can know I am there. Without thinking, allow this, by divine command, to penetrate deep into your soul. Let whatever impressions that come to your mind enter at will, without effort or interference on your part. Note carefully their import, for it is I within, through these impressions instructing you. Speak these my words slowly, imperatively, to every cell of your body, to every faculty of your mind with all the conscious power you possess. Be still and know I am God. Speak them just as they are here and written, trying to realize that the God of you commands and demands of your mortal self implicit obedience. Study them. Search out their hidden potency. Brood over them. Carry them with you into your work, whatever it be. Make them the vital, dominating factor in your work and all your creative thoughts. Say them a thousand times a day until you have discovered all my innermost meaning, until every cell of your body thrills in joyful response to the command, be still and instantly obeys. <laughs> 